The Mothman Equinox is a new event introduced with Update 32, also known as the Night of the Moth DLC. It comes with new rewards and lots of lore. Here's everything you need to know. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In this complete guide, I will show you how the new Mothman Equinox event works. I will start with the basics, then move on to a walkthrough where I show you how to master each stage of the event, including all the tasks too. Moreover, I will show you all the 10 new rewards you can farm from the Equinox, as well as where to find the mysterious lore books, with no spoilers though, I promise. I want you guys to explore that on your own. Lastly, I will share some important facts I discovered, as well as some major bugs you might want to know about. Well, with that being said, let's get started. We have a lot to cover in this one, so let's make haste. Alright, so let's do a quick intro for the Mothman Equinox. What is it and when does it take place? Well, this seasonal event features a sub-faction of the Cult of the Mothman, and the entire purpose of it is to summon the Wise Mothman. To do so, players must aid the devoted followers to complete a series of tasks, such as defending them from rival pagan cultists, or destroying totems of warding. Now, as I mentioned before, this event is part of Update 32, and the first edition should go live on December 7, according to the latest community calendar. The same day, the Night of the Mothman DLC is scheduled to go live too. However, more editions of this event should follow in 2022. Anyway, I noticed some confusion about this event, and that's probably because Bethesda first announced it with a different name. It used to be called The Ritual, but recently it got changed to the Mothman Equinox, as shown in the content roadmaps for 2021. Lastly, I highly recommend you guys to disable all your missions and dailies for this event, since using your compass is a very wise decision, especially when you are low on numbers, so to avoid getting misled by the wrong quest marks, make sure this event is the only one active on your data tab. Now let's jump into the walkthrough and get you going with the stages and the tasks. The Mothman Equinox starts every fixed hour when it's active, and it features tier rewards depending on your performance, just like it works with Midweek or Fast Nacht Day, for example. For this one, your new adventure starts at Point Pleasant, the home of the Mothman. Now, Bethesda labeled this event as hard, and that's because it's quite difficult to solo. This is a group event, as you need to defend several points at once. But first things first, we will get there later. Once the event pops up, you need to head to the roof of the Mothman Museum, at the very heart of Point Pleasant. Talk to interpreter Clarence to begin the Equinox. He will give you some instructions and then several tasks will appear on your interface. There are four tasks for this stage, some more difficult than others. Let's start with the vines of containment. You need to destroy them around the pyres, you just shoot at them and that's it. Very, very simple. Now, there are three pyres scattered around the town, one inside the church, one under the bridge by the river and another one down the road, also close to the water. If you are doing this almost by yourself, you can make a full circle to save time, such as water, bridge and then church. For the killing cultist part, well, it's very easy. Only six prophets will spawn per event. They normally spawn on the main roads or inside the surrounding buildings, so make sure to check it out too. If you have issues finding them, use your compass, track any potential lost or stuck enemies. Next, we have the rat stag blood. You need to kill nearby albino rat stags to loot their blood and then deliver to the blood bats sort of items across the town. There are around 10 of them, so it shouldn't be difficult to memorize at least a few. They are one to two close to each pyre, as shown in the footage. For example, there are two around the church. Uh, there's one in the back and then one in the front. There are also two around the museum itself, one in the road and one in the roof, and then two at the top of the bridge in this confined space. As for the rat stacks, they sometimes spawn in packs, 
Sometimes they take forever to spawn individually though. It's very inconsistent and it can even delay the event when the spawn is really slow. So I advise you guys to once again track them with your compass to save time. You can even see if there's nothing spawn at a time if that's the case. For the last task you need to destroy tokens of wording and they look like this. This part is probably the most tricky one because these totems can spawn basically at any roof. I did over a dozen events and overall they spawn around uh, the east side of the town, like 90% of the time on roofs. They can also spawn on the floor, but it's very, very rare. I only found one here at the cemetery and that's it. Anyhow, the totems can also spawn at the church roof or even at the far off building in the north, as I'm showing here. In order to easily do this task, I advise you to use a scope weapon to scan the area. After all, they are not very easy to spot without a little zoom in. All right, once you are done with the four tasks, you will move to the next stage of the event where you need to light the three pyres I mentioned before for the vines. Again, there are three of them, one inside the church, one under the bridge and one by the water at the very west side of the town. Once they are all on fire, you will have to defend them all from cultist enemies, but there are two rules you need to know here. First, the attack sequence is always the same for every event. The first pyre to get attacked is the church one, then the bridge will follow, and lastly, the water pyre is the last to get an enemy wave. However, the second rule you must know here is this stage entails many waves inside the wave. I know it sounds confusing, but hear me out. This is a progressive stage. At the start, when the church pyre is getting attacked, then only the church is being attacked, okay? The other two are not being attacked. However, as more pyres get added to the equation, it means everything will get attacked at once. If you have all three, church, bridge and water, it means the tree will get attacked at all times. So the best thing to do here is to always ensure you have at least one to two players at each pyre to defend them. Otherwise, enemies will quickly destroy them and then you lose your chance to get the best rewards possible because the reward tiers for this event depend on the pyres. So yeah, you really should defend them as much as you can. Well, once the stage is done, all you have to do is return to Clarence to show tribute aka spam emotes until the event is finally completed. If you want to quickly skip the completion animation, just do some more emotes or swap weapons. It's a little trick I love to use. And voila, the rewards list will appear right away. All right, I hope this walkthrough and tips helped you understand the event better and master the different tasks it includes. It's really not that complicated when you know what to do exactly. Now, let me show you everything you can get from it. The Mothman Equinox has 10 new and unique rewards you can unlock. But before I show you, I just want to let you know that the pyres dictate the reward tier you reach per event. If all three pyres survive, then you unlock tier 3 rewards the best possible. Also, in order to get a guaranteed mystery pick legendary, you also need to finish at tier 3. Now, besides 60 caps per event, two treasury notes and lots of random items, you can also unlock new cultist cosmetics and a few decors for your camp, as the data miner Garrus retrieved from the game files already. There are 10 rewards in total. Let's start with the cute Mothman beer stain, which features a vengeful Mothman with closed wings and red eyes. It's quite curious because we are doing a wise Mothman event, so I would assume we get a purple wise one, but nope, we get the enemy version instead. Well, don't mind if I do. I really don't care about the eye color. A Mothman is a Mothman all the same. Now, the Wise Mothman throne is just one of a kind item. It's beauty in its essence. Plus, it comes with special effects. And yes, the unlockable camp version is the exact one at the event area. Besides producing smoke and glowing like some sort of lava, the Mothman figure's eyes also glow pink. It's really a stunning addition and perfect to create some sort of cultist altar as your camp. Now let's move on to the cosmetics. There are three full costumes with the outfit 
and the hoodie. There are three trees, so six in total. The cultist enlightenment is basically the robes worn by all the friendly NPCs at the event, members from the enlightenment faction with the glowing wise mothman on the chest. I only managed to borrow the hoodie for this costume to show you guys, but as you can imagine, the model is the same for both NPCs and player characters, so yes, the looks do not differ here. Next, we have the cultist adept, another brand new set of cosmetics for that true cultist role playing are just to look dark and mystic in general. I think this set is a bit basic, but as the name says, it's an adept clothes, so it's kind of proportional to the rank, so it's perfectly fine. The last new cosmetic is the Neophyte one, which looks a bit more primitive and ancestral with lots of branches and skin showing. I also borrowed the hood to show you guys, and it looks pretty awesome, as you can see. But it's nowhere as awesome as the next reward, the cultist carnate helmet, which is this sort of red stack gas mask with a really huge filter. It's sick. Sadly, I haven't seen any player wearing it yet, so I got no in-game footage to show you. I'm assuming this is one of the rarest rewards to put your hands on. It should be, by the way it looks like. Anyway, the last reward you can get is the cultist backpack skin, which looks uh, strange, alternative, bizarre, I'm not sure, it just looks very weird, like it doesn't belong to the cultist at all. For me, it looks like a huge water flask with a pineapple top coming off and some sort of eggs on the side. Also, what is that texture? It looks like some sort of mush with straps on, well, at least it's a new item, so <laughs> there you go. These are the 10 new things you can get from the Modman Equinox event. Most of them are really, really nice entries, pretty exclusive, unique and awesome, except for some, but in general, these rewards are really, really great. And I think Bethesda should do this more often because it's exactly what we need. This next point is about lore locations related to the Equinox event. First of all, if you want to learn more about what's going on, as well as the origins and goals of this new group of cultists, you should talk to interpreter Clarence at the roof of the Mothman Museum. He has plenty to say. I can tell you that much. I spent some 15 minutes talking to him, exploring all the dialogue options and so on, but I don't want to spoil it too much here, so let's move to the next lore location. While the event is active, you can also find six sacred tomes, which are inside the church at two display cases, as shown. However, you might notice that you are not able to read them all. The system will tell you you are not yet ready to gaze upon this book. What does this mean, though? What are the secrets within such sacred pages? Well, lots of cultist lore, as you can imagine. But don't worry, to unlock them all, you just have to keep doing more Equinox events. That's it. According to the data miner Garrist, each book has a requirement, as shown. One completion for the first book, then four events for the second, seven for the third book, 13 for the fourth book, 26 for the fifth book, and finally 44 for the last and sixth book. I know what you're thinking, 44 is a lot of events, but you need to remember that the Equinox will be live for at least a week, so you will have plenty of time to unlock all these lore books. Anyway, I promised no spoilers at the intro, so I'm only showing you the cover of my unlocked books. I unlocked three so far, and they are quite extensive, there's so much lore to read in there. It's quite impressive, I don't think Bethesda has ever done something like this before for 76. I think you hardcore lore fans will have a blast. A really pleasant surprise when you get to read them, just saying. Now that you know how the event works and what can you get from it, let me share a few important things you may not know yet. For starters, Bethesda added a new experience buff. Yep, if you interact with the wise Mothman at the end of the event, you can unlock a new buff. Even though there is no button to do so, just click on it. The default key is E on PC and it just works. Once you do that, check your effects tab and you will notice an astonishing 15% experience buff for one hour, called True Wisdom of the Mothman which is a huge upgrade of the existing Wisdom of the Mothman effect, 
which only gives you a 5% experience buff. Don't forget this tax with other methods to buff your experience gain, so it's perfect for extra experience farming. Next, let me inform you that each event spawns at least one vengeful modman during the pyre defense. Normally by the water pyre, I always find one to three there during this phase, so I think it's a fixed rule for the event. However, if you are defending somewhere else, for example at the church, you will miss it altogether, but it's no big deal, I think. Another important thing to know is that legendary enemies often spawn during this event too, so keep an eye on your loot and on your enemy names too to spot such enemies. Now for bloodied builds, please watch out where you jump from. This town has mostly tall buildings, so jumping from almost any of them means certain death, unless your serendipity perk is on and triggers. I had to adjust my gameplay during my first event since, well, I kept dying to full damage. It was very embarrassing, so I just, you know, laid it low, started to jump less, taking the stairs, you know, the, the traditional ways, sometimes it's safer. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, the holy fire does not burn, well, not humans at least. I know this one is nowhere as important as the last facts, but still, I tested it out and decided to share it here too. In the name of science it is. As the last point, let me inform you about existing major bugs affecting the Mothman Equinox. To start with, when fast traveling to the event, sometimes it takes a while to fully load it, especially when you join in the middle of it. Ay ay caramba. In other words, it might not show up in your interface for a while, as a result, you cannot see any event objectives or stages, but do not despair if this happens to you. Be patient, wait a little bit, eventually it will load. The second major bug is about rewards. During the PTS, there were dozens of reports about no received rewards. I can confirm this one too. I did over 10 events right now and all I received was the beer stain, which is 100% uh, for the first completion and that's it. Despite always completing it with tier 3 rewards. I hope it has the fixes this one as soon as possible because it's very, very inconvenient. Lastly, there are occasions where the event does not start every hour. There are also multiple reports about this one. I believe this bug is related to the public test servers though, but in doubt, I hope it gets fixed and it won't carry on to the official servers. That's pretty much it when it comes to major bugs. The Modman Equinox is an interesting and content-rich event to experience. It actually feels very refreshing after no new events for a very long time, and honestly speaking, I think this is exactly the type of content 76 needs to thrive. Transformed beautiful locations, attached to lore that makes sense, with group tasks and new exciting rewards. I must say I was surprised in a very good way when I first completed this event and I believe you will enjoy it as well right now on the PTS or later on when the new update comes live to the official servers. More than the event, I think you guys will absolutely love these new rewards. Anyway, that's my complete guide for the Modman Equinox. I hope you learned something new, if that's the case. Feel free to leave a like, comment below, and all of that. I am Marta Branku, thank you so much for watching. If you would like to support me even further, consider becoming a member or a patron. The links are right below the video. Well then, I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!